uh, the Mali Eagles. The Eagles, uh, random fact, by the way, that the most common mascot on the African continent. I think uh, I think there's five teams that have the Eagles as their mascot. Um, and they have just hired former Gambian coach Tom Saint-Fit, the, the 51-year-old Belgian uh, manager who has a lot of experience across the continent. And Mali are in a weird place because if you had asked me, you know, about eight months ago at the beginning of the AFCON, as they got out of the group stages with Eric Sekouchel, and I'm thinking, man, they have, you know, a homegrown coach, has his badges, well-respected, great results in the group stages. And then even they started taking the game to Cote d'Ivoire leading in the, in the first half. You say, okay, this is, this is what we've been expecting from Mali for such a long time is when they get on the big stage, when they get to the big occasion, we know they have the quality to do it. Can they finally deliver? And they just produced a mental collapse of all time. And you had <laughs> just that meme of Eric Sekouchel kneeling on the sideline. That's what actually, <laughs> the, as soon as you mentioned him, that's what I was laughing about. <laughs> and they're pouring water on his head. And I just thought, oh, no, this is going to define Mali in football for, for at least a few years now. <laughs> But anyways, so, I, I mean, I, one very interesting fact I saw about them uh, this summer, they're going to have 11 players eligible to play in the UEFA Champions League. And that's really wow. indicative of the quality that they have. I think that could be probably top on the African continent. Uh, they just had a youngster, a really great uh, midfielder who I've had, had my eye on, Eric uh, Kone, Seku Kone, signed with Manchester United, of course. So, so they have, I mean, talent up the wazoo, especially in central midfield. But also pretty great winner wingers. Nene Dorjelis is, is coming into his own. They also have that thing about the striker. But Ibrahim Akone is coming back from an injury. He's uh he's back in training. So so we're, he's always been great with the national team. Tom Saintfi, I thought that did a good job with the Gambia with limited resources of playing a low block and surprising teams. You know on the counter attack. I think if he employs those tactics. He can find some success with Mali, but it just comes down to this mental obstacle. I mean, we talked about it with Morocco just for the AFCON. Uh, we talked about it with Senegal before they won the AFCON. They, I mean, from independence to 2021, they didn't win anything at any level. All of a sudden, they win the AFCON, and it spreads out to the other all the other age categories, uh, the Chan, the under-20s, the under-17s, the beach soccer, um, and so on and so forth. And I think Mali have something like this, some, some kind of mental block. With the youth level, they seem to do well. They obviously have the quality on the pitch. But then I think it's a psychological thing and it's probably the conditions as well because they got off to kind of a poor start in FIFA World Cup qualifiers. They only have five points. Uh, Ghana and Comoros are leading the group with nine points. Only four out of 10 matches have been played so they can catch up to those sides. But uh, they were complaining about travel conditions when, you know, uh, in the last international window. And it was the captain, Hamari Traore, that put a letter out on social media complaining about, you know, travel and playing conditions. And then almost 15 to 20 of his teammates would go and post the exact same letter following taking wow. his lead. And he was eventually suspended by the Malian Federation. Now, I don't know with Tom Sinfi coming into the fold, if they're going to bring him back into the fold and sort of make peace because he's a very important member of their squad. But for me, it's, it's twofold. It's psychological, but it's also the conditions. They need to be put in the right, proper professional conditions to succeed. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Mali very briefly, Salim? Well, I think the psychological one is one of the massive ones, right? As we, we, we've just spoken about Morocco, that a nation needs, for me, a nation needs regular success um, because if they don't get that, then it, it's a confidence thing, right? If, you, if you're Egypt or if you're Cameroon, you walk into an AFCON and you kind of, history mm. tells you you're going to do well, mm. right? Success um, begets success. Confidence begets confidence. It's a momentum yeah, thing. Exactly. So you need to build up that momentum. Um, and then as a nation, you start to have that confidence in you. And then it means when you get to an AFCON, you're like, okay, <laughs> minimum semi-final, even if we're not a good team. You know, we've had teams in the AFCON like um, Cameroon 2017. You, you remember my hero. Yeah. You can probably <laughs> it is. Two names in that team. If you're, if you're even somebody who watched every single one of their games. But um, why did they win it? I believe they won it because they're Cameroon. They've won it a lot of times. And they came in going, you know, if, they're, if, if their coach is saying, we're going to go and win it or we're going to get to the final, they don't think, you're crazy, right? Whereas if you're a Malia and the coach is telling you, you're in, the, you're in Ivory Coast right now, you're in Morocco, we're going to get to the final and win it. 
you might even look at the coach and say, actually, you're a bit crazy. Let's just take it step by step. So it's a football heritage thing as per Jose Mourinho. Yeah, belief. Belief is so important in, in international football.